guys welcome back to angel angela and on this topic i wanted to talk to you guys about when the narcissist mask drops you know not when it slips you know you're going to see the narcissist mask slip many times and these are the times where they say stuff that just does not relate to you where you where you almost have to second guess yourself like I think that person's playing. I don't really think that's how they are or that's how they think or, you know, um, it's almost like you try to make an excuse to why their perception is a certain way about people, about certain things. Um, maybe they jump into conclusions about certain stuff. Some stuff, they they might be right. You know, this is why... A lot of times you're attached to the narcissist, to the facade, because the narcissist is basically, you know, teaching you things and, and, you know, not just teaching you things, but you're experiencing certain things that you might have never experienced before. So you get like this high, you know, you get this, this deep um, awakening where you're like, wow, I've never done that with someone that feels good. That feels nice. I want to keep doing that. Right. Um, and the narcissist knows that, you know, so they know that you're looking for a a reward. You know, they, they know you're looking for a reward, but when the narcissist mask slips, you know, um, sometimes they even demand things from you. They're basically like, you know, if you want to get on my good side, you have to do this, you have to do that. And I know that for a fact, because I've seen, you know, people that they're going through it with a narcissist, and they're sitting here telling me, you know, I bought the narcissist some shoes, you know, I'm, I'm going to go and and drop them off, even though they're not talking to me. And you're just like, what? Their mask literally slipped. And you're trying to get the person whose mask slipped to be on your good side. It doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't make any sense. You want to be rewarded. You want to give back because you feel like they gave you something, something you've never had. You're addicted to this person. You're addicted to them. And you're willing to to do anything to get that high off of that person. But their mask literally slipped. You know, um, they, you know, narcissists are people that when someone new comes along, even if that person doesn't take the narcissist serious, in the narcissist's mind, they're already future, you know, making future plans with that person. So the narcissist mask will slip several times during the relationship where it's like they just disappeared or, you know, they turn their phone off or, you know, they they give you some bogus ass excuse like, oh, you know, the electricity at my house was off. I don't know when they're going to fix it, but my phone, you know, might die, you know, um, so I won't be able to talk to you. So they'll make up lies, um, you know, scenarios and expect you to just believe it. Right. But in those moments, you're looking from the outside in, you might even give this person a solution to their problem and they don't want to get help from you they're like i don't need your help and in those moments their mask slips because now after you've offered them help now they're devaluing you now they're calling you names now they're saying certain things about you now they're putting you down now you know they're telling you that you don't understand them they've you know it's like they flipped a switch and you don't even understand what's going on and now you're you're thinking maybe I said too much, maybe I did too much, maybe maybe I shouldn't have said anything at all, right? So you'll be, you know, confused and then, you know, your intuition is telling you 
no, this person, their mask is slipping and they're showing you who, who they are. You know, there's moments where um, they might tell you about a problem that their friend is having or someone close to them and they're sharing things with you, you know, and then you're thinking to yourself, you know, what the narcissist is saying does not sound right. Like, why would their friend do that? And why would they defend their friend knowing that what their friend did was bad? Or why are they trying to make me agree that what their friend did was right, right? So you, you'll you disagree with the narcissist, right? You'll disagree with them. Or you'll say, you know, that wasn't so nice. I don't think that that was a good idea. You know, um, they'll even have like, you know, future business plans with people, right? But they're not telling you the, the actual people they're talking about. They're, they're giving you fictitious stories. You know, a lot of times when the narcissist is giving you stories about their friends, families, and the people around them, they already know that people like to gossip. So the narcissist preys on that and they expect you to be the same way. And when it doesn't work, they get upset. And then they tell you, I should have never shared anything with you. This is why I don't talk to you about certain things. This is why you always tell me like what's on my mind. And when I tell you what's on my mind, you know, I can't be myself. They basically make you feel like they can't be themselves, but then they're not really telling you the whole truth. And you have to look at it like, Imagine one of your friends, right, telling you something about someone and you stick, you know, you stand up for your friend, right? You have their back to the end, to the point where, you know, your their enemies are coming for you. And you're like, I already knew what I was signing up for because I have loyalty to this person. But then later on, you find out that your friend left a lot of things out and then now the story seems to have changed because you're like, if I would have knew this, I would never got involved because basically you're starting stuff and you're looking for it. And, and you made it seem like they were messing with you, but you're you're doing your part, your share of things, too. And why would you leave that out? Why would you not tell me? You know, why wouldn't you tell me everything? Right. Especially if you're expecting me to be loyal to you. So that's what narcissists do. They don't tell you all the story because they want you to be loyal to them. And they plant seeds in your head and, and you'll become more angry because you empathize with this person. They're seem, they seem like a victim, right? That's the same thing the narcissist is doing to you. So if... As a woman, just from my perspective, if another woman does this to you, right, and then the narcissist is doing this to you that you're in a relationship with, you start to look at their actions as something you've seen before amongst the women in your family or your friends, right? Just because I'm a woman. This can go vice versa, for, you know, uh, in a man situation, right? So... Just like a man, he can see certain situations in his family where the men in his family play this type of game, right? So when you're with a woman and a woman is playing these tricks and these games that the men in your family are playing or they always seem to talk about this game, you're going to say, I'm getting played. Something's going on. Something's not right. So just like when you're with a friend that's not telling you everything and then they want you to have their back, you have their back. And then when it's time for them to have your back, they don't have it, you know, or they just used you to to fit their narrative on, on their mission, on their goal so that you can have their back and be there for them as a guide, as a coach, as a healer, as a friend, whatever it is, right? But you're like, this person's not that, that, they're not that good person that I thought that they were. 
So when you're with a narcissist, that's what they're doing throughout the whole relationship. So when you start to see that and you start to compare that to the women in your life, you're like, the narcissist is moving like a female. They're acting like a woman. They're acting fake. They're, they, they, they like to gossip. They like to, you know, they're very competitive, just like women are competitive. So this is what makes you even say sometimes like the narcissist, you know, they must be gay. You, you'll start saying things like that. And the narcissist knows that that's what you're thinking. Sometimes that's not the case. Sometimes it is the case, but sometimes it's not. Narcissists are known to have many sexual desires that are diabolical, that are sinister, that are against what people think are normal. So there's many things that can be going on with that narcissist, but to them, you'll never know because you're focused on the wrong thing or you're comparing their behaviors to someone else. And even if they're, you know, they're a narcissist, this is this is a, a different narcissist and this narcissist has different goals, different motives from your female friends or from your family, right? So what is that motive? You have to think about it. Like, what is that motive? Like, why, why would these people stick around you for so long and be so fake? Because when you're with them, time is going by fast but when you're with them it feels like it's going by slow you're getting to know them you're going through the love bomb discard repeating the same cycle and 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 the time is just moving on you right and then boom the narcissist you, you know they've discarded you devalued you many times but it it's different this time and you know it's over forever and you know they're never going to come back because this time the mask didn't just slip. They're the ones who dropped it. They're the ones who dropped it and said, screw this mask, screw this mask. What's the point on, on wearing this mask? It doesn't matter if I put it on or off. You're not going to believe anything I say. You see through me. You know what I'm about. You know how I think. At this point, every single t every time I tell you something, you think I'm lying. It's like having a thief come into the store and you know it's a thief, right? You're like, this person, I've already told them not to come back. They keep coming back. Just like the narcissist, they keep coming back to the scene of the crime. I already know they're going to steal. They, they always steal and run. The narcissist is like, what's the point on wearing a mask? You know what I, who I am. You know what I look like. You know my body shape. You know, you know, you, you just look into my eyes and you know. And if you don't know, it's be, and if you don't know, it's because you don't want to believe it. See, when the mask slips, right, they'll say things like I said, you know, one time I remember the narcissist talking about his brother and, and how they were in the hospital and I guess his brother's girlfriend that was having a baby had another girlfriend that came to the hospital and they got into a big fight and the narcissist was basically like you know she deserved it because she knew he was taken already and she still decided to have a baby so the way at an empath will think it's like what what do you mean the person at fault is the man like he's the one you know he needs to be careful you know and he knows that women are emotional so why would you play this dangerous game and why would you think it's okay to do that to someone when they're not even able to defend themselves they just gave birth nobody wants to remember giving birth to some to a to, to a stranger or someone coming in trying to fight them so the whole thing was just crazy to me but my mind told me they're lying they're not talking about their brother they're talking about themselves then I start thinking to myself I think the narcissist 
got someone pregnant behind my back. Like they have a, a kid and that's why they're acting crazy all the time and gaslighting me. And at this point, they're just dropping their mask. Like it's like there's no point on putting it on because there's so much stuff that that's going to come to light and you're not going to be down with it, you know? So I just remember thinking to myself, like, you know, they must, they must have got someone pregnant or something. And then I had been dealing with, you know, having a miscarriage and being abandoned and not being understood. And, you know, um, the narcissist not giving me, it it was like they didn't have any empathy um, for what I went through. You know, it was like, okay, it happened. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to look back at it. I just want a chance at getting back with you. And it's almost like what happened to me in their mind didn't really happen to me because they weren't there. It was like because they weren't there to see what they did or what I experienced by myself. It was like it wasn't it wasn't real. So this is the thing about narcissists and that you will come to understand until you leave them alone when you're just, when you're stuck with the shame that they leave you with, the shame of everything you went through with them, everything you lost for nothing basically for someone you have this shame inside of you. So when the narcissist puts themselves in shameful situations, they get upset with you instead of reevaluating themselves. So they put you in a situation where you start to blame yourself. They they flip the tables on you where you're starting to blame yourself and people look at you like there's something wrong with you, like you're not mentally well, like you have mental problems because it's like, how could you feel the shame for what this person did to you? You know, the moment I had that thought, you know, every time you start getting clues, the universe will just send you more clues. So I remember being in the car and I'm like looking around in the back seat, and I end up finding some um some baby wipes. And then I was like, OK, what baby wipes? But I questioned the narcissist and they were like, no. I just grabbed, I just bought those because they didn't have any regular wipes and I bought them to clean my car out. And I remember thinking like, this person's lying, but you're not wanting to believe that this person, you know, is showing you who they really are. You don't want to believe it. See, when these moments are occurring in your life or in your relationship where the mask slips or they say something that doesn't seem empathetic in your eyes their viewpoints you start to realize that a lot of their stories a lot of times when they do share things a lot of the things that they're sharing is about other sources of supply the reason the narcissist cannot completely drop their mask is because they haven't found a good source. So if you're wondering why they stick around for so long, because they, it's hard to find a, get, a good source. Think about it when you break up with a narcissist and you're alone, right? And you're alone for a long time, even years sometimes, right? The narcissist has to get into another relationship, meaning that while they're with you, they're building these connections and it's taking years and months to have these deep connections with these people that they usually discard you for. So they're, they're starting off in a lie. They're wearing a mask with this person. They're not being honest, right? But to them, the game is not to get caught. The game is to be able to leave into the next relationship without being exposed this is why they're willing to spit on you hit you call you names they're willing to break your property they're willing to steal from you they're willing to do things that will permanently scar you because to them it's like see i'm showing you i'm a bad person don't come back don't look for me Because to them, it's like, I finally found a primary source and I know you're going to want to find out who they are 
or you're going to want to reach out to them and tell them that I'm this evil person. So sometimes they'll beat you to the punch to make you look like the crazy person. And sometimes they know that they can't tell the new supply about you because they know that the new supply will see through them. See, if it's a, if you get, if they get with a new supply and the new supply is like trying to fight you, that's how you know automatically the new person they got with is really low grade because they're, they're, they're coming from a position where they believe they're the primary source and they don't really know the narcissist. So it kind of makes them look silly. The narcissist knows that, but that's what feeds their ego. Um, they know that you, there's no fight in you in the end. Um, a lot of times there isn't any fight in you. You're basically like, I give up, be happy with whoever you want. I didn't know that I was being conned in the relationship. So I guess, you know, you, you got what you want and that's it. But eventually, eventually, you know, it'll start to hurt you. You know that you, you made the right choice because the narcissist got super disrespectful, especially when they're getting disrespectful with you for no reason. You haven't done anything to this person, right? You've been nothing but nice to them. You saw them getting their karma time and time again, and you were saving them. And eventually you're like, I can't save you anymore. I have to save myself because you're nearly killing me. So the reason I say the narcissist drops the mask is because the whole time the narcissist, you know, from the start, the moment that they captured you, that's exactly what they did. They captured you, you know, they, it's like committing human, it's like human trafficking because they're selling you out. They're selling you out from your family, your friends. They're buying you from your old life. And when they buy you from your old life, they're capturing you and they're putting you in this box. And in this box, you're not allowed to see what the world is really like. You're not allowed to feel that there's real love out there waiting for you, that there's real real connections waiting you're not allowed to feel those things all you and when you're in this box that the narcissist puts you in all you see is the narcissist all you think about is the narcissist the the narcissist makes sure that they talk to you you know in the morning before you go to sleep they make sure they're with you at all times they make sure that they're always you know if you're going to work this is how i knew this is how I knew the narcissist was in a competition with me. It was times where they just had popped up at my job, like bringing me gifts. And I'm thinking like they're being nice, bringing me gifts and trying to be romantic. And now I, I realize that they were just keeping their eyes on me. They were making sure that everyone at my job knew that there was that that door is closed like you know to them it was more about this is my property like no one touch it and you think it's love right that's what you're thinking it is but no you're dealing with someone who is stealing your energy and they're competing with you and they're putting that mask on like they care about you they're sending you flowers sending you gifts Oh, let's go out to a restaurant, you know, oh, you know, I don't even know why I did that. Oh, you know, I wasn't raised right. Oh, you know, I, I had to learn as I, as I grew and they give you all these excuses that seem real, you know, and you feel sorry for them, <laughs> but they already have those list of excuses literally waiting ready for you when the narcissist puts you in this box they want to make sure that they control everything and then they they want to make sure that they give you 
something that a feeling, something that you aren't used to. And this is why they're very quick to be intimate with you. To them, it's like I have to be to them. Sex isn't like, oh, I'm having sex with my partner. I'm attracted to them. I want to be with them. I want to grow with them. You know, um, they're not obsessed with any supplies that they're with. Their main goal is I need to have sex with this person so that I can get into their mind. I need to have sex with them a lot, many times a day, every day. I need to be more, I have to be more intimate with them than they've ever been in their whole life. You know, um, I have to make sure that they're, they're too tired to even go and look and try to be with anyone else. So when the narcissist is in the process of, you know, they already know you're, every time the mask slips, they know that you know that they aren't who they say they are anymore. So it's not fun anymore because they know that you're thinking ahead when it comes to everything that they do. They know that you want validation, that you want proof because they've lied to you and they're not willing to do that. So when they're being intimate with that new person, they'll start doing things so that you can start paying attention to the signs. So you know, maybe before, you know, they talked about having children with you and now they're not, now they're using protection. Now it's like, I don't really want kids with you. Now you're finding, you're finding, you know, condoms and things like that in their cars and their wallets, in their, in their, in the bedroom, you know, it falls off the dresser. Or now they're, they're taking the sheets off the bed they're changing the sheets. They're, sometimes you're walking in, the sheets aren't made. And you're wondering, why are the sheets? Why, why are the sheets never made? Or why does it seem like you're always washing your sheets? Or why does it seem like you flip the mattress? Why does it smell like bleach? You know, so they do things without any shame. They don't feel bad when they're doing these things or the pain that they're causing when the mask is slipping. So... When someone, you know, when people say that, you know, that quote where people say, um, keep your enemies close, that's what the narcissist is doing. They look at you like an enemy that they captured and they're using and they're like, I don't care about your life. I have to make sure I get on top no matter what. I, I, I never thought this day would come. I prayed for someone like you. And now that I now that you're, you know, now that you're here, I'm going to deal with the cards that I have. I'm going to sell you out. I'm going to sell you out. It's just the game to them. And, and you're, you're thinking, well, why would they stay there for years? Because it's not easy finding a new source of supply that is going to be a primary source you know, you should know that. So because they're so confident when you're with them, to them, it's like, it doesn't matter where I work. As long as I'm around women, this is why a lot of people get insecure with narcissists when they go to work. Because a lot of them, they're seeking for supply constantly. When they go out with their friends, they're seeking for supply constantly. That's all they do. They go online. When they're with you, they're looking for people. When they're coming to your house, they're looking for people in your area. You know, um, narcissists are very manipulative type of people. You know, um, you know, the, the narcissist men in my family, my brothers and stuff, you know, they're the ones who brought these things to my attention when they go to work and they're saying things about how their boss this woman is is always flirtatious with them so the narcissist goes to these places wherever they're at with confidence because you're giving it you're fueling them and then on top of that you have all of these um self-seeking attention self-seeking women and men around that aren't, you know, that some are narcissists, some aren't. And um, it's feeling the narcissist to another level now, to the point where they feel like they can not only control you, but they can control those people at work because they're, they're, um, 
functioning from a place of not knowing who they really are, who's behind that mask. So to them, it's like there's lots of people that I can hang out with, but it's very hard to gain someone as a primary source. So while they're with you, um, there'll be times where it seems like the narcissist gotten into a relationship and that relationship only lasts two weeks or a month or two months. And you're like, why is the, why am I always having problems with the narcissist? And that's because there's always someone around, even if it's for short periods of times. And then certain people circle back around. And this is why they have to make sure they keep that mask on for you and they they feed you lies and tales so that you can think to yourself that this person isn't all the way bad see they know you're thinking to yourself this person is evil sometimes and sometimes they're good so the narcissist is going to let you know that they're evil and there's going to be times where the narcissist is going to tell you but you know i'm only nice to you or i treat you better than a lot of people you know they'll try to make you feel like they care about you even if you this could be your own family member this could be your mother she could sit here and tell you you know you're my favorite granddaughter you're my freight you're my favorite daughter so they'll say these things to you because to them, that's like giving you a snack of what you like. You're in this box and the narcissist is giving you a snack. And they're like, if you're not behaving, I'm going to take this snack away. You know, um, if you start figuring out their tricks, they're quiet. They're watching you. They're like, oh, this person's figuring out my tricks. Oh, this person is setting up scenarios to see if I'm going to catch the bait. They they see every single thing that you're doing when you're waking up. When you're watching movies or you're just on your everyday life. When they start seeing that you're having different awakenings. That you're catching certain things that you didn't catch before. They're like, oh, you know. Some of me is rubbing off on them. They're starting to catch things the way I see them. Because I play this, the, the same things that I point out in others are the same things I have in myself. They're very good at pointing out other narcissists. So then you, you start to become aware of these type of people. And then you realize you're dealing with one of them and you're like, but I don't want to believe it. You just don't want to believe it. You know, so anytime someone gets close to the cage, you know, and, and they're they're showing you a different way of living. The narcissist is like, oh, those people, they're being fake with you. They're not really like that. The narcissist sees certain men in your life and they know that those people are really good men and they're like, Oh, that guy is a square or that guy um or or you know um or if you do something nice for the narcissist, they're looking at it like almost like they don't appreciate it and they almost look at it like if you would have been with a different guy, he would really appreciate this. Like they know that what you're doing for them, they don't deserve it. They almost look at it like I know you should be giving this to someone else. I know if you would have done this for someone else, they would have done, they would have gave you everything you've been asking me for. The narcissist only comes around you when they know that you still don't know who they are. You're in between the person that they show you when the mask slips and the person that they are when they're being nice, when they're being calm when they seem like they're being normal people. They know that you're in between those two characters. So this is why they keep coming back. This is why they create soul ties with you. Because even when they let you out that cage, they know they've they've made you fearful of everyone. They know that 
you know, they've instilled things in you, you know, that you, you won't be able to find someone better than them because all these things were, all these seeds were planted and, um, they, they destroy your hope. They destroy dreams. They destroy, you know, your strive. Um, they make you weak. They take your energy away. Um, they, they take the beauty of life away because they kept you in that cage so long that now you're free and everything's beautiful, but it's like, you still feel mentally um, chained to this person. And this is why they always know people will circle back around to find answers and closure. So all that you're my favorite was a lie. The narcissist is literally your biggest enemy, your biggest hater. Um, This person, you know, they preyed on you. They, They felt like you know, you're going to be good bait, you know, um, they didn't care about your friends, your family, they didn't care about your career, they didn't care about your finances, they only cared about what they wanted, you know, um, so, and so the narcissist, since the narcissist only looks at people like supply, and they can't completely drop the mask with you, they fake it, they fake it, and They feel like you would have done the same. They feel like if you got the same opportunities, you would have done the same. So when they see that those opportunities could probably present themselves, they have to they have to destroy those opportunities. This is why they won't celebrate you. This is why they won't be happy for you when you'd expect them to be happy for you. This is why when you're buying a new car or buying a home and or doing anything positive for yourself or the people around you there's this jealousy inside of them they almost feel like those things should be theirs right because they feel like you're just a possession they feel like they own you and they own they feel like they should be able to exploit you before they leave you know they feel like eventually i'm going to find a primary source because I've uh, I'm your biggest enemy and I've been latching on to you and, and you're not understanding that the only way to destroy you is by being close to you you know because by being close to you I'm making sure that no one else is, is, you know, I'm making sure that, that you stay single. I'm making sure that you, when I move on, you don't have anyone. I'm making sure that when I move on, your support system is gone. So to them, they're planning ahead. They're planning ahead. To them, it's like, by the time I move on and I'm happy, I have to make sure I destroy you so that you won't destroy the new relationship I'm in. You'll you'll be too weak to try to destroy me. And even if you try to destroy me, you'll just look crazy because I, I'm going to make sure that you'll destroy yourself once I'm gone. And then I can say, oh, that's my crazy ex. Oh, you know, she she or he is mad because they're not doing anything with their life, not knowing that they sacrificed themselves. Um for the narcissist or the narcissist um treated them so badly in the end that um they had to get their mind right they couldn't be around people they had to get their mind right so the narcissist is your biggest enemy because the only way to defeat your enemy is to get close to them see from the start The narcissist knew that there were going to be several awakenings, several realizations that they were lying, that they were deceiving you. They knew that you were going to be confused. They knew that um, even after these incidents, all they had to do was apologize or pretend like they care and pretend that, you know, relationships just go through things. But in reality, this person is your enemy from the start. They planned to get you. They said to themselves, you know, I got me, I got me someone. I got me a fool. I got me someone I can I can build with 
for now until I find something better or until something from someone from my past comes back. So to them, it's like, you know, um, I know you're going to be so upset with me. You might call the cops on me. That's happened to me before. You might kick me out of the house. That's happened to me before. Um, When they, you know, get physical with you, they'll call the police on you because someone's already done it to them. So you're with this person being loyal to them and they're just staying close to you, using you, attacking you, thinking to themselves, I'm going to get away with this crime because you're not even fighting back. The last person was fighting back. You're not fighting back. I know I have you. I have your mind. You're not going to report me to the authorities. You're not pressing charges on me. You're not going to do anything. So they do it to you. And um, when they do it to you, they get a satisfaction because it's like, okay, I made you look like the crazy person. So when I get away with my crime, I can get away with it without you having any fight in you. And then, you know, when once the narcissist has you acting out of character, they know that you're not going to calm down until they treat you bad. You know, they're like, the only way to calm this person down is to is to treat them bad, you know, is to treat them bad because once they're feeling bad, they're going to blame themselves and then they're going to they're going to reach out to me. They're going to reverse, you know, they feel like the reverse Hoover is going to happen. And then they can make you look like you're delusional to other people. So this is why this person's your biggest enemy is because they want other people to know that, you know, you're delusional, basically. And in a way you are because they're not being honest with you, but they're being honest to other people. And this is why you'll come around certain people and they have a different perception of you. You know, and that's a lot of times when you know that this person's your enemy, when you come across people that you don't really know like that, but you're connected to them through the narcissist and you can see their facial expressions. You could see something in their eyes or they know something you don't know even if they don't say it, you know, um, so this is why the narcissist is your biggest enemy, because they know they can't move on to the next person, um, right away, and they, you're thinking to yourself, well, why can't you just be single until you find that person, because you're the person that gives the narcissist a high sense of self-esteem. This is like when the narcissist future fakes with you and then you're like super motivated to make money and you're super motivated to be successful because you're like, we're going to be this power couple and you just get so excited, you know? That's how the narcissist acts every time they get a new supply. That excitement. You know, like, you know, and, and the only way they can have that excitement is if they have someone who is boosting their ego. They can't be single going from person to person waiting to one day find the one or find primary supply. They don't want to just be single and have like, you know, just be dating and dating because when they're with you, when they're getting energy from you, the women that they're attracting, these women are attracted to them because of you. You know, these women smell, they can actually smell you on the narcissist. The, the narcissist seems more desirable by other women because it's something about their energy that is giving... I'm fulfilled with my life. I, I'm get, They're giving confidence. You know, they're giving this type of confidence. And the narcissist wants you to believe that the type of confidence they have, they'll have it with or without you. And yes, that might be true. 
you don't need to be with the narcissist to be confident, right? But when it comes to seducing men, you're not, you're, as a woman, yeah, you can go around seducing men and being nice and stuff like that. But when you're in a relationship, there's something about you as a woman that other men want. And you, you know that because when you're in a relationship with a man, you have all these men inboxing you. All of a sudden, they're inboxing you. All of a sudden, they, they want to be your friend. They want to talk to you. All of a sudden, they're, and you're like, all of a sudden, I'm taken and all these people are coming around. Even my exes are coming around. And it gives you this confidence because you feel like you can have whoever you want. You get to choose. Right? That's how the narcissist feels. The only the difference is that you're so in love with with the narcissist that you don't have eyes to see anyone. So you're brushing people off like, nope, nope. You're even telling people the truth. Oh, I'm in a relationship and they're they don't care. Because you've made yourself look more desirable. And and now when it comes to the narcissist, this is why they can't be alone. This is why you are the enemy, because to them, it's like, to them, it's like, let me just be with you. Let me just hold on to you. No, I haven't found a primary source. Okay, let me just stay with you for a little bit longer. And then when I find someone, I'll leave you alone. I'll leave you alone. That's what you want. So when they find someone, they're giving you that energy like, Okay, I don't need you anymore. You said you didn't want to be with me. You've broken up with me before. Remember last time? Now they're bringing up things from the past. And you're like, yeah, but you're the one who wanted to come back with me. You begged me to take you back. And they're like, well, you shouldn't have let me come back. That's on you. Because their whole motive was to literally use you as bait so this is why they stick with you for years because it's not easy for them to find a new source of supply so when you finally don't hear from them it's because they've either returned to an old supply that they've made primary or literally they've been in a whole relationship for the past year or two or even three Mostly, mostly narcissists will be in relationships for one or two years before they completely discard you, like completely, completely. Most of the time, the interactions they have with people, it only lasts like a month, two weeks, three months max, because a lot of people are already connected to other people, meaning that they already have children by someone or they already have someone that they're going through the same dynamic with the, the narcissistic relationship and they only went out there to play with the narcissist and now the narcissist in their life is back and they're gone and they didn't give nothing to the narcissist so now the narcissist comes around you and they're like I haven't been with anyone I haven't even had sex with anyone, I swear. And they sometimes they're telling you the truth. They literally didn't do anything with that person. That person wasted their money and their finances. And now the narcissist is broke and they invested all their investments already. So they're back. You know, so when the narcissist drops the mask, this isn't their mask slipping. This isn't you being confused. This is you knowing what you're dealing with and knowing that every time they say something, they're lying. Every time they do something, they're lying to the point where now they drop the mask and they're like, I'm just going to lie to your face. They're either going to lie to your face, knowing you know the truth, knowing you've seen the evidence and, and you're like, you don't see anything wrong with what you're doing. And they're like... No, if you want to stop talking to me, stop talking to me. 
I'm telling you, you know, they get really disrespectful where they're, where they're basically saying, are you going to tolerate the disrespect and just be secondary supply or I'm just going to discard you because you're you're never going to believe me and then you're going to expose the new person I'm with and, and expose me to them and to them it's like, I can't allow you to do that to me. I know I was doing that to you. I was in your life making sure that you don't have a partner or you don't end up with anyone. I was doing that to you, but they don't want you to do the same thing to them. So to them, there comes a point in time where they're like, I have to drop the mask. I have to tell you the truth. Um, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to be happy with the next person I'm with. I've already been happy with them for some time. You just don't know that. And now I'm ready to make my transition to this new, fresher, younger even relationship. And um, to them, it's like, if you try to get them back or, or try to stop them from moving on, you know, if, to them, it's like, if you try to stop me or if you try to if you try to be with me after you know that I'm a bad person, if you try to be with me, then I almost don't trust you. You're up to something. If you know all these you're sometimes sometimes you'll tell yourself, what if I do everything the narcissist tells me to do? It's still not going to work out because now they're going to be paranoid. It's like they're going to feel like you're not going to allow them to move on. So to them, it's like, I I have to make sure that I treat you bad. I have to make sure that you never look back, that you never want to look back because at this point, I've already found what I was looking for and I don't want you to revenge me and get me back for what I've done to you. Because then I'll end up with nobody, not you or the next person. So this is why they sacrifice you because to them it's like if this new person finds out that I've been lying to them for the past two years and that I've been in this 10-year relationship, then to them it's like, you know, even if that person decides to stay they know that that's something that that person's going to remember forever, meaning that things might be good, but one day if things are bad, that person's going to remember. Oh, I remember in the beginning, this girl said this, this, and that, right? So this is the main reason a lot of times people tell you not to tell the new supply because either way, they're still going to deal with them. Um... I wouldn't care about telling them. I mean, I wouldn't go out of my way to go tell them either. But, you know, if they were to call me or something, I wouldn't care to tell them the truth because it's just the truth. But um, that's what the narcissist does when the mask drops. So when the mask drops, the narcissist um, will know that you know that they've moved on that not only do they have a primary source but they have a secondary source and really when it comes to you it's they don't see no use it's basically just do what i tell you spend you know your time alone lonely nights and and we'll be friends you'll see me once in a while you know um that's what they're trying to make you agree with they're playing a game and they're like this is what's going to happen in the game I have new cards that to deal with thanks to you and um yeah you should have left me when you had the chance because you know now you're paying for not leaving because you gave me enough time to go find a secondary source so when you're trying to find out who the primary source you'll never find out because they're using a secondary source a decoy and the the narcissist is basically just filled with smoking mirrors to the point where now you won't even recognize them. You don't even know who they are. And the reason, like I said, they dropped the mask is because they know now that every single time that they were being nice, 
they were being fake. They know that you know that. They know that you see through people a lot and they don't feel comfortable being around you anymore because now they know that you're going to relive certain events and then you're going to question them. You know, there might be times where something came up missing and now you're like, oh, it, now knowing that the narcissist completely, it could have had been them because they'll lie to your face. They'll help you look for things, you know. So um, when the mask slips, you guys, I know it's painful. I know it's hurtful, especially when you realize like that person was just wasting time and then they didn't they didn't care about how things impacted your life and you feel played like oh this person go you know they get to go off into the sunset and and here they go riding off of somebody you know riding off of somebody's bad wagon right they're riding off of somebody's boat and they let her they literally they literally left you with your ship sinking drowning you know um and and that's how narcissists are in the end when the mask slips or drops should i say oh when it slips when they drops when they're like there's no point on putting it on screw this mask you know this is what it is Yes, I did it. Yes, I committed this crime. Yes, it was all a lie. Yes, every single bit of it was a lie. Um, I know the good times, it, it, you thought they were good times. All those stories I said about other people were really stories about me. Everything that I ever said to you, I was twisting things around. I was making up stories even just to get an expression or just to make you feel like we're close. That's how diabolical they are. Like, I'm just telling you a story. And it's not even real. It's just fake. It's just to make you feel like you know me or something. That's how fake they are. Another thing that I wanted to talk about before I end this video um, is that, you know, a lot of times you think you know the narcissist, but you don't know them. It's like watching a movie over and over again and you just keep discovering new pieces um, you'll even have dreams of your subconscious mind just putting everything together and um, you see things that, you know, shouldn't be seen. Excuse my background. Microwave. <laughs> but um, I know with me, I came to a point in time where I realized that they were getting out of hand and it wasn't just the narcissism, but it was also um, drug addiction and a lot of times you guys don't know that narcissists are, um, are on drugs and they keep it on the hush hush. And you'll think to yourself, no, this person has a good job or this person has a business. And trust me, they're, they're sometimes some of these people you're thinking, oh, the narcissist is depriving me of sleep and stuff like that. They're fighting their demons and things like that. Some of them are on drugs and you just don't know. Um, when I had that realization I asked the narcissist, I joked with them, you know, because the head bulb in my head turned on and I, I, you know, when you experience people in your family who are on drugs, you start studying the narcissist and you study those people and you study those people in a way where you didn't study them at first. And then you start looking at the narcissist and then you start seeing how secretive they are, how much of a liar they are, you know, um, so I remember just having, you know, this conversation, joking around with them and asking them if they had um, any coke. And they basically were like, oh, I know someone that we can get it from. And that's what I knew right there and then. And what was so shocking to me was that when I met them, they made it seem like I would never do that. You know, I don't understand why people do drugs. I don't understand. They'll say crazy things. They'll try to pretend like they're this other image. But a lot of times um, they start getting into these um, things with new supplies where they're, they're getting around, you know, people at concerts or, you know, meeting people at bars and 
they'll start getting into other activities without you knowing. And, you know, everything the narcissist does is is to have a story to tell. You know, oh, we had a crazy night. I fell asleep in front of the drive through I was so burnt out. I fell asleep at the drive through They want to have stories to tell, to entertain people. So a lot of times you're the buzzkill. You're the person telling them that they're changing. And in their mind, it's like, I'm not changing. I've always been a narcissist. I'm just, I, I have dropped my mask and now I'm not wearing that mask every day. You know, I'm done wearing that mask. And they start doing the things they've always done in front of your face. They're, they're you know, they feel invincible when they're on this high. And, um, you know, they, they feed their demons, whatever their demons are telling them to do, they just do it. And they don't think about it and they don't feel bad because, you know, the drug is their excuse. But they know that their personality is their personality either way. You know, they know that, you know. So um, I didn't know that about this person. I had been with them for years. You know, I, I never thought they were capable of certain things. And then you... um. You might even be fooled because when you're with them, they're listening to music. They're trying to project celebrities and, 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 and compare themselves to them. And, you know, they're living in this like fairy tale world. Um, so um, I hope that this message, you guys, was helpful on the mask dropping and um, just knowing that every doubt that you had... Um, you know, it, it, it was the truth. It was your truth. And, um, you know, when you're second guessing yourself on if you made the right choice and you're battling yourself, it's good to understand what exactly happened and how it happened from the start and how the narcissist will continue lying because they're deceiving the new person. And when they're being, you know, when they're sleeping around with the new person sleeping around with you, they don't feel bad. You know, you get emotional thinking of just the thought. And to them, it's like, let me flip the mattress. You know, um, this is not the person you thought you knew. This person fooled you when they're nice to you, when you're eating together, when they're looking like a regular human being. That's just a facade, you know. Um, so if you guys are interested in booking a session with me, my booking information will be on the description. Just give me about... 24 hours to respond to you if you guys enjoyed this podcast or if you guys are new to my channel do not forget to subscribe like share comment down below and i'll talk to you guys on the next podcast love you guys bye